He'll do it. And so here we go. Picks and bans for KT Rolster versus CJ Entis, game number one. Wow, Callista banned out actually on the blue side, something that we yeah. rarely see. Hmm. I wonder what this means. Maybe uh, priority on a jungle pick well, first? Well, you would have thought that CJ would ban the Callista eventually, though, so why go ahead and first ban that if you can rely on your opponents to just take it out for you? There's a Maokai huh. against Shy. I think they're just trying to set it up for uh, a jungle pick for score, it seems like. Either a Rek'Sai or a Grungle, perhaps. Yeah, but the question is, how far does CJ Ants want to ban junglers right here? Because if they don't leave two good junglers up, then Ambition might have to fall back onto a different pick. So I think that's the idea, right? I mean, this, this match is very much a battle of junglers, among other things. They're going to ban the Alistar against Fixer. Maybe it's setting up for a Bard first pick. Maybe KT bans Thresh here, actually, just because they may not want to first pick that champion, even though Fixer yeah. and Mad Life both very good at it, uh, to prevent CJ from taking the Thresh. You ban Thresh and in then the first round of the draft on red side. You ban Thresh and then you first pick Ash. That's what you Nailed do. it. Nope, Azir, actually. Oh, ah, okay. Which is interesting because both Nagda and Coco are very good Azir players. KT and certainly Cassiopeia. has a specific plan. There's a Cassiopeia ban. So what is this first pick going to be? What does KT set themselves up for here? Thing is, you can just ban that Maokai first and wait for the enemy. So they okay. they first pick the Gragas. Yeah, so it is going to be a jungle first pick. So I don't really get the Callista ban on blue side. I don't think that actually did much of anything at all. Hmm. Unless they were 100% sure that CJ was not going to ban hmm. Callista. And the Gnar wouldn't be too surprising, uh, of course. That's going to make it difficult for Someday to take Hecarim and may force Someday onto something like Rumble in that case. So Gnar Thresh, I think, likely going to be the first picks in this particular draft. The Thresh is a high priority champion between both of these two teams. There was a time where Shy, just plain old, refused to play Gnar, but yeah. times have changed. He decided that that was going to change after Gnar's nerfs in the playoffs, weirdly yeah. enough. Mind games, Monte Cristo, mind <laughs> games. Oh, okay, they're gonna grab the Rek'Sai as well too, so CJ not wanting to reveal a lot early on, it looks like, with these first two picks. I don't know. I think the Gnar is the better pick right now. They're, the Rek'Sai, I suppose, could outside chance be taken by KT for a top lane pick, which yeah. has been known to happen from time to time if they really wanted to hard deny ambition, so maybe they're slightly sensitive to that. Maybe they are worried that it's a support Gragas, and so they need to take the jungle pick right away. <laughs> he was, at least it was a thing for a short time, you know? Yeah, it was. We got, we got a week or two of support Gragas we in did. the world of League of Legends. We did. We needed more, though. That'd be, I would be very interested to see Gragas flex between support and jungle like that. Nogde cool. just going to commit to the LeBlanc early on. All right, bit bold. A bit bold, but uh, we'll see how CJ responds. I mean, Urgot's still available. They can really easy just go into a tanky comp here. So against Anarchy, Coco played Jace into LeBlanc intentionally. Ah, so yeah. that's something that could come out again. Coco obviously feels comfortable with that matchup. He got chunked out pretty hard early on, but... True. In the later stages of the laning phase, he was actually trading pretty well. He could also take the Cassidy in here. That's definitely a viable pick. Seems like Jace would have a hard time escaping in lane from Gragas and Nautilus if they went roaming, though. Well, most champions would. <laughs> but Jace especially, Cass man. Cassidy I mean. actually has an even harder time escaping the Nautilus Gragas rolling because he doesn't True. need a, a knockback to save himself. True. And will we see this Varus maybe by s for space? That would be interesting. No. No. Oh, well. I like Varus. I actually enjoy playing him. He's not that good. I like it. Cassidy and Nar. So saving that AD carry pick, actually picking both solo lanes in one go on the red side. So KT has a chance here to... I don't know what they're going to play in the top lane now unless it's Rumble. They, they can take Rumble Sivir here, and they'll be, in good situ uh, they'll be in a good situation. They definitely don't want to give Sivir to CJ, so I agree with them locking it in right away. I think Rumble Sivir would be a very strong competition. Okay. But it's going to be the top Yasuo. 
All right. I guess it could be top LeBlanc, too, but... So something about Sunday. He does this sometimes. He does. He does do this. He's known for playing top Riven in solo queue, mm. and sometimes Sunday will just do things like play top Riven in the finals against the KT Arrows for seemingly no reason. Um, he... He has this this history of like oddball top lane picks that he pulls out. I like it at seemingly random times. So he must think that this is going to be a really good counter matchup to the Nar. Uh, I don't know anything about this matchup, so I can't really comment on it. I think it would be difficult to stop what the Nar is throwing at you, especially if he all ins you in the Mega Nar form with the Yasuo. Yeah. But maybe you can bully him out early on. And if this... I, I love gets... the Urgot pick here because it it's one less target for the Yasuo to go after once you get that Frozen Heart. And you could just ult the Yasuo too. And Yasuo is so squishy right now that you could just kill him. So that may force Yasuo into getting a QSS, which is really not what you want to do on that champion. So. Yeah. I don't know about this. I think it's going to be really hard for Yasuo to get any sort of meaningful damage done onto CJ. Yeah, this composition is extraordinarily difficult for Yasuo. So unless they get a massive early lead, but hearkening back to the match that Jinir played last week, GBM had really good Yasuo realms, you know, moving into the side lanes, picking up kills. He got pretty fed in the early game, and even with that advantage, he did almost nothing in the late game. And, and they kind of won in spite of him, as opposed to him really helping, even though he did have good Yasuo play. There are a lot less roaming opportunities for a top lane Yasuo as well, too. Well, so at least you have teleport. So yeah. you have that going for you. and But you don't have that many knockups right here. You're relying on Nautilus and Gragas, really. I'm very curious to see how this works. In the late game, KT has to play pick. But killing anybody on CJ will be really difficult. Yep. Certainly seems that way. So KT Rolster having their work cut out for him. An interesting composition coming into game number one. And we'll see if they can get the ball rolling. And get some sort of lead onto CJ and prevent that pretty terrifying late game scaling from this tanky composition. And it is time, guys. KT Rolster, CJ Entis. It's the main event of day number one of week two of Champion Summer. It's time, let's get in the game. All right, welcome to Summoner's Rift KT versus CJ Entis. Fan clubs are out in force for our second match of the day. And uh, Nagne, both the solo lanes for KT and for a, a bit of a hard time. Lots of roaming capability from both of our mid laners. So this could be pretty dynamic in terms of teleport play. Mm -hmm. Early on and there is Score <laughs> jiggling pleasantly for us. Thank you, thank you Score. You know what ward skin I like Monte Cristo? The mech award. Oh. Eh. It's cool. I'm not in love with any of the ward skins yet. I like the dragon head one. That one's pretty cool. Yeah. I like the draven head. <laughs> the the <laughs> draven head one has a certain amount of charm to it, you know? So do you lane swap up against this top lane Yasuo? He's just going to sit there and Maybe. play his harmonica mournfully in the bush. Kind of gives away your position if you do that, though, doesn't it? In a bush, playing the harmonica. <laughs> Somebody not even looking at his screen right now. Nope. Yep, just kind of hanging out. He's all tabbed. So here's the late swap coming in from CJ. And they are going to see Fixer on the bottom side, so they will know they have successfully engineered the lane swap in this situation as Fixer goes to freeze the minion wave. So how does a Yasuo do in a lane swap? This is not well, a I question imagine. for the ages, I suppose. He's going to go ahead and do the wolf camp. Can he complete this easily? I'm not. He's already almost out of mana, and he will soon be out of life. Yeah, can he? OK, he did. He yeah. got level two. Well, he, right. he has a shield, so that will yeah. help him at least complete some of these camps. Oh, and look at this. Ambition get very low. Fixer with a. Early jungle invade wow. even pops at Ignite. 
Fixer could have forced a flash there too. I think so. If he had wanted he to. He's trying to just to delay as much as possible. Harder to do that with Rek'Sai, but Ambition starting on the jungle on the weak side, even though they initiated the lane swap. You have to be so careful about that because it's really easy for... Oh, oh Someday and Scar okay. right here. Ambition in trouble! And first blood goes to Someday. Wow, so, wow, that works. So greedy in terms of jungle pathing yeah. from Ambition right there. They were the ones who initiated the lane swap, yet he starts Gromp on the weak side. Shy is in lane. Shy is pushed up. Shy can't help him. And Nautilus is one of the best champions at level one to disrupt the jungler. He's really tanky. He has that stun on his passive, so it's ridiculously hard to deal with him. And he has a really low cooldown on his E, so he could just stand there and spam that on top of you. So great reaction from KT, but Ambition continuing to try and get that weak side jungle down. And you got to just give that up at that point and concede it to the enemy team. Wow, and it looks like KT's going to be able to take a dragon from this as well, too. I guess it it's hard to have a CJ game without Ambition giving up first blood, no matter what role he's in, you know? <laughs> just like old times. But KT with a pretty massive early lead, actually. A lot of enemy jungle. First blood onto your top lane, Yasuo, and now a dragon as well, too. I mean, they are positioned about as well as you could possibly be going into this, so it really is on KT to keep this going now. Yeah, Someday 2 actually did get some decent experience from that. He'll be able to TP into the top side now that they see Mad Life in the bottom lane and perhaps get some CS right there as we check out some win rates here. And Space's Urgot has been one of the best Urgots in Korea. It, just thinking yeah. back to how he played it against SK Telecom recently when he was just snagging Hecarim out of all those home guard uh, teleport engages onto the flank. And that was it's very one cool of Space's, to see. Yeah, it's one of Space's best champions for sure. Yep. As we can see with that impressive 80% win rate. But KT also is a team that when they started their rise towards the end of spring, they did it with Sivir. Sivir was such a priority to their hard engaged style of composition where they really dove you heavily in the mid game. You know, Yasu, Yasuo fits with that too. You know, you yeah, can dive in just the same as you can with a lot of other top lane champs. So KT, you know, sticking with what works just in a little bit of a unorthodox way. And yeah, getting this advantage too is going to be really helpful. Even though he just has the Avarice Blade right now, that's going to help snowball him with that additional gold that he gets from that item. Very helpful tool for him to have this early on in the laning phase. That is a great pickup. Somebody doesn't seem to be having too much trouble farming. He is uh, doing a very good job of denying CS well, to space as well, too. How do you hit Yasuo with the corrosive charge here? He's just going to dash straight through it, and yep. if he gets hit by a Q from Urgot, it'll absorb his shield. So he's going to do pretty well at this 1v1, I would think, especially since he didn't get denied at levels early on. Score looks for an opportunity right there. Isn't going to commit, just pops right through the Baron pit and will be seen on the Scuttle Crab, which was already taken you know, if Urgot by does, Ambition. I mean, if Urgot does lock onto you too, you just throw up the wind wall and then you kind of negate yep. the whole point of it. Yep. So it's a good counter in that 1v1. All right, Mad Life lurking in the tri brush. Arrow intelligently moving away from the possibility of any death sentences. And doing a good amount of damage to Shy in the process as well, too. A lot wow. of damage to Shy. Boomerang Blades. Yeah. And Arrow just continuing pushing. They want this turret too. KT trying to press their advantage as hard as they can. They got that early dragon. Maybe they can get this tower. Shy's TP's back up, so he's going to get underneath turret again pretty quickly. Oh, is on he this just going to get wave. dove, though? Well, he's almost Meganar. They know he's there now, but right. he has no ult at level 5, so they're just yeah. going to deny him off the turret. They do know there's a ward in that tri brush, but don't go to clear it. And here we go, someday running away from ambition. Yeah, not really in a position to fight anyone, per se. So he does need to be careful there. That bottom lane turret already taking a lot of damage. Shy trying to save it, but KT will probably be able to kill it pretty quickly and then just send their duo top, I suppose, right? Well, yeah. And CJ's lack of presence in this game is really problematic because if we look at it, KT, as a result of that first blood, were able to get someday in the lane with a really, in a really nice position and he's kept up in levels, and he's kept up in CS with Shy. but the difference is, is that KT has been pushing instead of freezing this entire time. So they got so much damage down onto the bottom tower, and they got the dragon early. This is a, going very, very well for KT Rolster. Yeah. And they're playing it out nicely also. Uh, they're using Sivir's wave clear compared to Urgot's early. Urgot's gonna have to go back and buy that tier and be in a power trough. 
if they can get some more gold from that turret onto Arrow, it's, it can all add up to a pretty substantial early snowball for KT. I mean, it, by taking the first dragon so early, uh, they will have that opportunity for the second dragon, kind of right when Urgot is in that power trough too. So yeah. they, might, they might as well have guaranteed themselves a second dragon too. And how's CJ gonna fight that? They have exactly. no wave clear with this composition. And what KT should be doing is what they are doing, which is just fast pushing. I mean, Urgot, Cassidy, you're not, Gnar, you're not stopping a fast push coming in. Mm -hmm. So KT has to be focused on these early turrets. Coco's also going to be going for a scaling item with the Rod of Ages. Uh -oh. There's, uh, just in terms of power spikes, KT's going to have a huge advantage at the next, at the next dragon fight someday now. Just getting a deep ward in. Yep. Certainly having no issues with CSing at all. A little bit ahead of Shy. And everyone's there to just kind of protect Coco. Flan <laughs> is someday there. He's trying to set up that ult onto Coco with the yep. tornado, but uh, back off for the moment at least. Not going to dive the turret or do anything too hasty at this point in time. But there you go, Coco trying to deal with some of these minion waves in the mid lane. And it's like someday just wants to head back to the top side. He, they're going to have TP advantage for this next fight as well. Right. Well, I mean, there's no reason why someday needs to go and hunt for kills right now. He's got that nice lead. He can just sort of hold his own turret, keep that pushed up as much as he can, I suppose. Dragon up in less than a minute, though. Hmm. Yeah, but KT, again, you know, that teleport advantage just means so much right now. Yeah, it's going to be a very small tithing window. So if CJ can delay it for another 30 seconds, about, looks like, then maybe that TP will come back up and they'll be able to actually contest it, but again, no Rod of Ages yet. Tier pickaxe compared to BF Sword. This is not really a battle that CJ's equipped to fight at yeah. this stage of the game, unless they really catch somebody out. No, it looked like someday was trying to wait for Meganar to end to go in on to Shy there and maybe chunk him out enough to give it an easy dragon. Does a little bit of damage. He went in maybe a bit too early before Meganar ended. Not opting to use that ult just yet. No, he needs to save it for the yeah, dragon, dragon right fight, now. Yeah. He successfully did a lot of damage to Shy though. Yeah, hits him with the tornado in the end, and he's can just back off right now. Threaten the, yeah. threaten the teleport. Tons of wards already set up for KT. Got vision absolutely everywhere. Scuttle crab in favor of CJ, but that's all the information they have. Ambition also topside. They're just going to have to give this one up. Uh, well, Mad Life and Space, they want to try to stop it as much as they can. Sivralt activated. They managed to grab Space. Can he get to the Lantern in time? It's close, but it doesn't look like... Oh, oh. he gets it out. Wow, but there's Someday right there. He tp down, pushed against the wall, though, by Mad Life with that play. Someday still gets the kill with the Tornado, though. Big ultimate from Shy, but nobody there to follow it up. Coco comes down a little bit late. They can turn onto him easily. Coco goes in manages to pick up the kill on the score and now here comes ambition a bit of a long protracted fight but kt coming out on top after taking that dragon yeah. oh no they didn't take the dragon no they didn't get the dragon get they it. just started it and turned immediately with the several yeah. once cj came in and they just need to keep rolling with these kills so they get a couple in favor of just one and they'll be able to fight again short cooldowns on their ultimates remember explosive cast uh and last breath very very short in terms right. of cooldowns so they can just continue fighting over and over and over again at that objective. As we take a look at this here, Space actually gets the position reverser flashes. Now, you can see Fixer trying to stand on top of the lantern right there so he can't click it. And nice then, tornado. Yeah, the tornado sets up the kill right there, and he gets the ult. That was a beautiful play from Someday, but they were all actually way too close to the wall right there. So Shy managing to get an ult off that hits four people. That was a bit of a positional error, but Someday, man, what a great tornado. No kidding. The accuracy to hit something like that during a fight is uh, pretty impressive. They're in the middle of being CC'd by a bunch of people. Someday going Giant's Belt. Wow, okay. Huh. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe... Randwins, maybe? Oh, uh, yeah, perhaps. Uh, score goes in onto Mad Life there. Space fighting out with Someday. They blocked a little bit of action from the wind wall. There's the last breath. Someday with another kill. Well, His that's the thing. Also is working out pretty well. Uh, Shy and, and Space don't have their ults up yet. Space's ult just came back up, so yeah. that's the advantage of fighting around these short cooldowns and using this composition to just fight over and over and over again is it's very empowering for Yasuo and Gragas. Yeah, and it looks like KT should be able to take the second dragon now. And LeBlanc, too. Really short ult cooldowns on the, th the three 
players in the top side of the map. Right. Wow. KT really making this composition look uh, look easy, you know? Yeah, but the scaling is the issue here. Shy is getting some damage down on the top side. Yeah, they've got a 2,500 gold lead, which is all fine and dandy for the moment, but CJ's scaling is crazy. So if CJ doesn't fall too far behind, they will be able to make a comeback in this game as Cassidy starts to stack up that Rod of Ages, That's as Urgot gets tankier. And I have no idea what somebody's doing. It could be a frozen mallet, too. Well, that's the thing, I mean, KT's got as much of a lead as you could reasonably hope for with this composition at this point, and yeah. now it's on them to just kind of keep the ball rolling, you know? You know, Don, I bet it is a Frozen Mallet. I bet he's gonna yeah. split push as Yasuo with Frozen Mallet and try Makes something sense. kind of weird. There's there's two two ways he could go, I think, with this. Randu and Zoman would be great because you can instantly get into the back line, but there's just not a lot of auto-attacking threat from CJ, I think, to truly justify that purpose and frozen mallet who's going to stop his split push right that's really a, a problematic item three members of kt moving down against the three members of cj here in the spot lane just to protect that turret top in danger short for cj crew. that's right here we go nagne score right there dodging that death sentence someday just clearing the wave and backing out, Nagne is going to get poked a bit by space, I suppose. Yeah, that could have turned into a four versus three pretty quickly with yeah. Cassidy, and they knew that Arrow and Fixer were going to take this. So what they did right there was they forced Coco to move into the bottom side, were able to successfully defend their turret. Still almost no damage on that because of the very low wave clear on CJ Entis. How's mid look right now? I guess we'll have to wait, won't we? I guess we will. It is a pause. Uh oh, and that is a problems. Someday. Problems right now <laughs> with someday's computer. Is someday wearing those frames without lenses in them? Oh. Is he guilty of that, Doa? You know what I like to do because it's really popular here in Korea to wear those frames, or the frames without lenses. <laughs> is I when I'm talking to the person, I just slowly reach up, hook my finger through one of them, and slowly pull them off <laughs> their face. <laughs> it's uh, what else are you supposed to do? You know. You have to test to see if there's actually glass in there. Yeah, you just hook your finger in there and slowly pull it off their face. I can't tell if there are, if there are glasses in there. I not. wait. Uh, I think there's lenses. Yeah. Wait. I'm leaning in. It's a small monitor. <laughs> I'm not really seeing any distortion from where a lens would cr cause that. Yeah, I'm calling fake. <laughs> I'm calling fake glasses there. Fake glasses, so yep. it's a, also... Even the weakest prescription would distort the eyeline on the side of the face. <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Oh, new keyboard. Serious business. That one's retired. <laughs> retired to the floor. Yep, that's right. I'm looking to replace my mouse pretty soon, the poor thing. It's been... Uh, Did you kill it, Doa? It's been used vigorously <laughs> for years. And it's starting, like, the left click is freaking out, where if I, like, hold it down, it, like, double clicks really fast. That's what I want my tombstone to say. Used vigorously. <laughs> <laughs> Lived a long life, used vigorously. <laughs> Just take it as you will. A mystery for the uh, History Channel of the future. Well, or for whatever channel does history, because it won't be the History Channel. <laughs> Who knows? They don't even do history now. <laughs> yeah. Like Pawn Stars is history. No, it's not history. <laughs> yeah, you find old stuff. They realize at a pawn shop, but still, guys. They realize that Pawn Stars reality TV was actually even cheaper to produce than just taking historical documentaries and having a voiceover. I mean, how cheap can it? It must be very cheap just to take pictures of World War II and then have it's a voiceover over the top. Dude, if you think about it, doing a reality show, you need to shoot like on location <laughs> stuff. You need to pay all those extras, all that crew. You need to pay your talent, right? Because even though it's real life, you're still paying to be in it. Whereas with the History Channel stuff, ah, real history would be less expensive. But the difference is to get actual real history people involved, you'd have to pay professionals oh, that's instead true. of idiots. They're more so. expensive, I've heard. <laughs> professionals are generally more expensive than idiots. And you do have to pay licensing for all those historical <laughs> photographs, which can't be inexpensive. All right, maybe Pawn Stars is the way to go after all, you know? All right, sure, why not? Glad we could solve History Channel's that's right. uh, business model here during this break. Yeah. Don't they have like that ancient alien show or something like that? I have how no is, clue. How is that history? <laughs> because it's something that hasn't even happened yet. The only time I ever 
watch the History Channel or what? see what's on it is when I have Direct TV in one of my plane flights because I don't oh, really? have I don't have I haven't had actual cable TV since for 10 years me neither <laughs> so <laughs> who needs it <laughs> internet guys internet's a way to go i know i'm kind of preaching the choir here but uh yeah well we're back we filled another pause good for us we're doing good doing good work tonight someday's doing good work on this yasuo as well for now it's looking a lot like that gbm game where gbm did really well early and then yasuo's flaws became very apparent as the game went on. But you know what, Doa? It's a different what? build this time. So It is oh indeed. My. Ult on to Coco. Can he get to the Lantern? Oh, nice pulling in. Oh, he doesn't oh! make it out. Oh, the auto attack followed him all yep. the way through the Lantern. <laughs> and KT. Wow. Going nice catch. They're all in style right now. Great warding in the top side, so they knew they were safe. No one coming in from behind as they catch out the Cassidy. Cassidy with no flash. Well, it's still working. It's still working. Someday is split pushing now. He's got to have uh, quite a bit of money towards that frozen mallet at this point. Assuming that's what he's doing. Oh, I think you're right, though. I mean, because what else would you... You're not going to go Sunfire Cape. You're not going to go... Uh, I mean, you could go Randuins, but you don't really need to go Randuins against this team. I think it makes the most sense to go with uh, Frozen Mallet. He may go Frozen Mallet Black Cleaver again, actually. That may actually be a thing that he does this game. Could be pretty funny to see. Yeah, I think it's... Perfectly I actually reasonable think on that's, Yasuo. that's one of the better things you could do with Yasuo is just yeah. split push top lane with him with those items. And that those items do give Yasuo a certain amount of tankiness as well too. That just building pure damage doesn't. And you know we have talked about Yasuo being a bit on the vulnerable side right now, so it mitigates that a little bit anyway. Yeah, the, the downside to that is you're kind of messing with his kit because he does scale so well with crit. Yeah, but what can you do though? Oh, shy, totally caught. Not going to make it out there. Ooh. The roaming gang squad is real, but no the, problem, the problem that CJ is having here is they can't clear waves fast enough to actually put pressure on these turrets. Yeah. So it's giving KT an extraordinary amount of time to roam. Well, CJ is finally going to take their first turret of the game, it looks Are like. Are they going to lose a tier two for it, though, is the question. Shy still has Maybe. 13 seconds to come back up. And it looks like they may at least take some damage down onto that top side is Fixer and Score come back. Still no mid tower down in spite of a lot of roaming from Nagne. Yep. And uh, actually, BF Sword picked up by Sunday now. And uh, looks like he's almost going for IE. So just the Giant's Belt for some extra HP and then into, in, into Infinity Edge for Sunday. Why not? So he is going for the big damage. Ult All right. onto the back line, so not split pushing. At least not yet. No frozen heart, no, or uh, rather frozen mallet, or uh, blade of the Ruin King, which are the usual items for a split pushing Yasuo. Yeah, just kind of counting on this giant's belt to give him enough uh, tankiness, quote unquote, to sustain his way through the mid game as he builds into kind of higher damage late, I suppose. And we did talk a lot about Yasuo's problem staying alive because yeah. he could just get blown up so quickly that. Having an additional 400 and change HP does make a pretty nice difference. Well, I like this build because you've got the crit early on from the static shiv, and then once you move into kind of those crucial mid-game fights, you've got a little bit of extra health to sustain your way through it. So seems like a pretty good build. See how it works. So far, so good. Dragon up in 45. Looks like they're going to get the Rift Scuttler as well. And yeah, we'll be seeing many more wards this dragon. Yeah compared to the last one from CJ. Both top laners with their TPs up, taking a look at that. And only one turret down so far from CJ. To be expected with their composition though, you pick Kassadin and Urgot, you know, you know you're gonna lose your outer, your outer ring faster. That's pretty much a given. Yeah. Oh boy, oh, if that hook had hit, maybe CJ would have had a chance. Coco coming in from some damage onto Nagne. KT back away, Ambition yeah, coming in, gets a knock up only onto Fixer. Damage, nice ult onto Space, knocking up Shy in the process as well too. Big explosive cast, puts his mad life back in there. Someday gets into the back lines, but gets taken down very low. Still, they manage to pick up a kill onto Mad Life. And whoa, KT is very low right now, but some kills come in for Nogne, and KT able to barely clean up that, that fight. Nogne, we'll there's a flash kill. distortion. Yep. Triple kill for Nogne. They're going to secure that dragon as well, it looks like. And we saw KT get so low there. But in the end, Yasuo and LeBlanc had just enough damage to make it work. 
And yeah, the Yasuo is working this game, but it's been so much more about KT punishing Ambition. If we think back to how this game played out, the punish that they got from Ambition's pathing and Ambition giving up that first blood, the fact that they were able to put so much pressure on the first tower because of it, thereby accelerating the tower game for themselves, the fact that they were able to get that first dragon so early and then fight repeatedly in CJ's power trough before we see the Muramana finished onto space, before this Rod of Ages really kicks into gear right here. So I think that if someday had picked any top laner, we would be seeing a pretty strong performance. For me, it's much more about the way KT played this game, and they're not even gonna go for the Dragon now. I guess that's weird. Well, yeah, I thought they were gonna take it right away, but they're gonna give this one up to CJ. And Yeah, that third Dragon is actually important for them because yeah. they have to play around that potential fifth Dragon stack, and they already had a nice gold lead coming in. So I would say for this particular team composition, better to try and snowball off the dragon than get that tier two in the mid lane right away, because you can always dive that later. Right. Hmm. But very large gold lead now for KT. Yep, again, it really can't get any better than it is right now for KT, 8,000 gold ahead. And even without that dragon, still in pretty good shape. Looks like they're gonna find that pink ward there. But KT, I really like how hard they punished. Ambition's first blood. This yeah. is, and it's not that big of a mistake from Ambition, but they did all the right things oh. to maximize their benefit. Here we go. Fix it gets grabbed. Ambition tossed into the Yasuo out again. Meanwhile, Nagne just blows up Shy. You just cannot get caught by this KT team. There goes another one. Double kill again for Nagne. Fixer in trouble here. Space uses that position reverser. Space getting very low. Another kill comes in for someday. Yeah, KT has uh, snowballed this quite possibly to a uh, pretty quick end of this game as they are gonna take out this inhibitor turret. Coco and Nagne dueling in the mid lane. Nagne able to escape fairly easily with that distortion. Coco can't quite chase enough right now. I like how they sort of baited this Urgot pick in too from CJ Antis, but you no, know, CJ I think not with the best draft this game. Well, they got, they got sort of tied up in the idea of counter picking here, here I feel mm. like they were trying to pick the Cassidy and the Urgot just to have some prefer some preferable lane matchups, um, but they got overly greedy and KT was able just to push so incredibly quickly. And here we go, someday just gonna move on through with that Infinity Edge now has Ninja Tabi completed as well. Not really sure why he has Ninja Tabi. I don't know. Doesn't want to get auto attacked, I guess. <laughs> He's worried about it. I think Merc Treads would be better here. Oh, knock up. Oh. Uh, the Coco didn't quite get there for the last breath. Actually, the alt was not yet. I'm trying to see. Yeah, it wasn't up. Oh, here we go. Mad Life trapped against the wall. Space in a lot of trouble, too. Can he get to the lantern? Uses the position reverser. Gets himself away from the lantern. Whoops. Oh, space. <laughs> Not the time you want to use that. Mad Life's like, no! <laughs> and this could be a Baron for KT, couldn't it? It very well could. Well, 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 well. well. 16 to 2 in kills is Yasuo doing uh, quite well. And KT with this Baron now. I think Fixer has been so good this game. Yeah, definitely. They've all been very good this game, I think. I mean, look at Ambition. He's uh, been part of 14 out of 16 kills. Really been active around the map, so just in general. I just think Fixer set up that play well. He knew the right way to roll him in onto Ambition to punish him for that mistake. And Fixer's uh, ultimates on Nautilus have been really on point. He set up so many of the plays in this game and the engages mm. as well. I'm impressed by his Nautilus play considering that it's not something that we really associate with Fixer. Well, like we mentioned earlier, things really changed for KT once he came into the support role. CJ trying to make a bit of a pick right here, but a little bit too afraid. Ambition, oh, dodges a body slam, gets out on the lantern. But yeah, I mean, Fixer's made such a big difference in general that uh, it's not too surprising right. to see him expand his repertoire. I'm sad, it is Randuin's Omen. Oh. Oh well. Did go for that IE first, but I mean, it still works. Nice wind wall to block that. Ambition again caught. He's just not been in good position. There goes Mad Life immediately. Coco in a lot of trouble as well. Last breath on his space, oh. and Coco for a double kill. 
Coco tries to get away, but there's a kill for Nagne. Nagne has been such good cleanup. Looks like the turret is going to do it. CJ hasn't been able to and finally kill someday. But uh, it KT. took two, two turrets right there. KT just such an overwhelming advantage. And yeah. This is looking much more like the KT that we saw towards the end of last season. Just incredibly hard driving team that if you give them a lead like this, they will just continuously dive you and fight you and play out that lead quite well here. There's not really anything KT's been doing that's been overly risky. It's just been very punishing play. Right. And so two inhibitors taken down by KT now. They've still got that Baron buff. And CJ, I mean, CJ 16,000 gold down at 24 minutes. There's just nothing you're going to do. KT would have to throw pretty hard to lose this one. But look at this. Again, someday with the great Yasuo play. Yeah, and there it is. There's a knockup right there. And then score providing the other knockup over the wall with the body slam. So yeah. that was actually just a really great setup from two different knockups for that last breath. Well, they know how to play with this top Yasuo, that's for sure. I really don't think Top Yasuo was the biggest factor in this game. Toma. I mean, they're playing. I'm not saying that, but I, I'm saying they're doing it well. You know, they're yes, playing into that it is well. True. Yeah, and we saw just like we saw GBM play it well. Oh, score! A little bit caught. Fixer comes in. Explosive cast teleport coming in for CJ as well too. Arrow loading on some damage. Shy zoning gets a stun on the score here. Coco in the back line. Someday comes in a bit late here. Nogne joining the back of the fight as well too. A kill for Shy comes in initially. KT finally grouping up onto the sort of fractured CJ, but they need to make a retreat here. Someday going in after Coco turns onto Shy. Now Nogne again just doing such a good job cleaning up. Space finally gets caught here as a double kill for Nogne comes in. Might go for this triple. No, turning on to Shy. Yeah, you'll get that triple. There it goes. Go. Oh, okay, there it is. Triple kill. Wow, another multi kill for Nogde and showing why people have been banning LeBlanc against him so frequently this year. Well, it's like if the first initial engage, if someday doesn't kill them, Nogne does. And if not, Nogne doesn't kill them, someday does. So either way, you've got these closers, you know? As and far Arrow as, is here to press R. That's right. Arrow <laughs> makes everybody faster. Without him, they would walk slower. <laughs> Looks like somebody's going for a GA at this point, which is a good buy on Yasuo in the late game for sure. Nearly a 20,000 gold lead now for KT. At 26 minutes. Yeah. yeah, this game's an absolute slaughter. But if I'm CJ, I don't worry too much. I think that you just are like, well, we screwed up our early game, and then because we screwed up our early game and we had no wave clear, the snowball came in even harder against us. You want to play your God and cast it, you have to make no mistakes. And so you, I don't think they're going to be that upset with this game. It's just the reality of the pick ban and how that first blood happened and the way that KT was able to snowball off of it. Right. That said, it was, it's a really beautiful example of how to snowball off of a first blood. KT played it out incredibly well. Yeah, oh, alt again, Nagne gets hooked, and KT trying to find someone. They alt onto Ambition, Fixer grabs that, Lantern again, Shy hopping over it. They want to save it for Ambition. Can he grab it? No, Arrow gets that kill. They're going to pull in Fixer with the death sentence, put him in the box. Space coming in now. Will he find a position reverser target? Doesn't look like it. So they got the support, but Fixer had already used his alt, so doesn't matter too much at this point. Yeah, a bit overly greedy there from KT, yeah. but they have two inhibitors down. Obviously not a lot left to lose at this point, but the minion wave not even close to that turret, so there's no real follow-up yeah. on that kill whatsoever, especially with Baron still being two full minutes out. KT still has five times the kills that uh, CJ does this game. It's a bit of a slaughter. It is indeed. action pack slaughter, which is the best kind for League of Legends. Well, you could take a job with the LPL then, Doa. Well, I mean, I wanted it to be logical action pack slaughter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The LPL is very good for entertainment. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The burns are real. No. No, I'm not meaning to fire these shots. It's just happening. Someday, just going to steal Tempest everywhere. Why not? He's got that flow. And he's Hasagiing through the minion wave as they slowly now hopefully don't overdive this turret any longer and prolong the massacre that we are currently enduring. You mean enjoying? Enjoying. Yes. I'm, in, I'm enjoying. You may not be. Oh, Coco. 
All right, here we go. And the ult on the space here. Explosive counts doesn't do a whole lot, but they do grab ambition out of everything. Another kill comes in. Shy knocking everybody away, but they're going to need more than that. Someday, getting in the back lines on the Mad Life gets one kill. Coco very, very low. Position reversal used. Double kill now for Arrow. And this game is over. They're just going into the Nexus turrets now, and KT coming in, getting the damage done in the early game and snowballing so well off of that early advantage, making it look easy with a 22,000 gold lead at the end. GG. Yeah, KT ending the game with more kills than minutes just for them. Wow. So big, big bloodbath. Double-double for someday at the end there. Yeah, 4 KT rollster. Yeah. And Nagne finishes 13-0 and 7 as well, so big time performances. Really good play on the map, and now we've seen KT. They came in, played a very slow-paced game against Samsung, played a very calculated game, this time up the tempo considerably to what we had seen from them late in the season. And I think if you're CJ, you take away the Sivir now, you say, let's just play wave clear, let's play this team fighting style that we're so good at. Yeah. They can certainly bounce back from this. I think so too. I think we're gonna see a, a bit slower paced game in yeah. game number two, which I suppose doesn't